When we think of special forces, images of commandos parachuting from planes and engaging in unconventional warfare typically come to mind. However, did ancient Rome possess elite units that could be considered the special forces of their time? Surprisingly, the Romans had various specialized military units and intelligence services that performed crucial roles similar to modern special forces. They conducted tasks ranging from elite protection and urban policing to reconnaissance, intelligence gathering, and covert operations, demonstrating that the concept of specialized military forces has deep historical roots. Today, we explore those units. The Praetorian Guard. Let's start with one of the most famous elite units in ancient Rome. The Praetorian Guard was an elite unit within the Imperial Roman Army, established to serve as the personal bodyguards, protectors, and intelligence service for Roman emperors. Their role extended beyond mere protection. They were deeply involved in the political machinations of the empire, often influencing or directly participating in key historical events. The Praetorian Guard was officially established by Augustus, then Octavian in 27 BC. While similar units existed during the Roman Republic, tasked with protecting high-ranking officials and generals, Augustus formalized and expanded this concept to create a dedicated imperial bodyguard. Their primary function was to ensure the safety of the emperor and his family, providing a reliable and loyal force that could be trusted above the regular legions, which were often stationed far from Rome. Initially, the Praetorian Guard recruited members primarily from Italy, particularly from regions known for their loyalty to Augustus. As the empire expanded, recruits also came from various provinces, but Italian origins remained preferred for the elite corps. Candidates had to be Roman citizens and were typically selected from the best soldiers within the Roman legions. They needed to be physically fit, possess previous military experience, and demonstrate unwavering loyalty and good character. Recruits underwent rigorous training to maintain their elite status and were expected to serve with distinction. Service in the Praetorian Guard was highly prestigious, often coming with significant privileges, higher pay, and better living conditions compared to the regular legions. The Praetorian Guard played pivotal roles in several significant events. Under Lucius Aelius Sejanus, the Guard amassed unprecedented power. Sejanus, the Prefect of the Guard, manipulated Emperor Tiberius and consolidated his control over the Guard, leading to a failed coup that ultimately resulted in his execution when his ambitions were uncovered. During the year of the Four Emperors in 69 C, the Praetorian Guard played a decisive role. They initially supported Emperor Galba, but switched allegiances to Otho and later Vitalius, showcasing their influence over imperial succession. Ultimately, they backed Vespasian, who secured the throne. Members of the Praetorian Guard were directly involved in the assassination of the notoriously tyrannical Emperor Caligula. Following his death, they played a crucial role in elevating Claudius to the throne, demonstrating their power in determining imperial succession. Throughout their existence, the Praetorian Guard was involved in protecting emperors during various insurrections, conspiracies and military campaigns, reflecting their importance in both security and political spheres. Notable members of the Praetorian Guard included Lucius Aelius Sejanus, who served as prefect under Tiberius and became one of the most powerful and infamous members. His consolidation of power nearly allowed him to usurp the throne before his downfall and execution in 31 C. Marcus Opelius Macrinus, another notable prefect, orchestrated the assassination of Emperor Caracalla in 217 C and subsequently declared himself emperor, ruling until 218 C. His rise from Praetorian Prefect to Emperor underscores the political influence wielded by the Guard. Philip the Arab, known as Marcus Julius Philippus, served as Praetorian Prefect before becoming Emperor from 244 to 249 C. His transition from the Guard to the throne highlights the close connection between the Praetorian Guard and the highest echelons of Roman power. Macrinus ascended from the role of Praetorian Prefect to Emperor ruling from 217 to 218 C. His brief reign was marked by his attempts to stabilize the empire after the turbulent rule of Caracalla. Philip the Arab's reign from 244 to 249 C followed his service as Praetorian Prefect. He is known for his efforts to maintain stability within the empire and for celebrating Rome's millennium.
The Praetorian Guard was disbanded by Emperor Constantine I in 312 C after the Battle of the Milvian Bridge. Their support for his rival, Maxentius, led Constantine to dissolve the unit, seeing them as a potential threat to his rule. The Praetorian Guard remains one of the most iconic units of ancient Rome, renowned for their elite status, political influence, and pivotal role in the protection and administration of the Roman Empire. Their legacy is a testament to the intricate relationship between military power and political authority in ancient Rome. Explorators and Speculators Explorators and Speculators were specialized units within the Roman military, responsible for reconnaissance, intelligence gathering, and various other duties that extended beyond conventional battlefield roles. They played crucial roles in providing strategic information to Roman commanders and ensuring the safety and success of Roman military operations. The exact date of establishment for the Explorators is unclear, but these units were present from the early days of the Roman Republic and continued into the Imperial period. They were essentially scouts who gathered information about enemy positions, movements and terrain. The speculators also existed during the Roman Republic and became more defined and prominent during the Imperial period. Their roles included intelligence gathering, acting as messengers and couriers, and conducting surveillance operations. Members of these units were typically selected from within the legions, often chosen for their skills in observation, stealth, and physical endurance. Candidates needed to be physically fit, have keen observation skills, and possess a high level of discipline and loyalty. Prior military experience was essential, as these roles required an understanding of battlefield tactics and enemy strategies. Recruits underwent specialized training that focused on reconnaissance techniques, survival skills, and covert operations to prepare them for their duties. The explorators played vital roles in various Roman military campaigns by providing critical information about enemy movements and terrain, which allowed Roman commanders to plan their strategies effectively. During the Battle of Teutoburg Forest in 9 C, the failure to effectively gather intelligence contributed to the ambush and defeat of three Roman legions by Germanic tribes. This highlighted the importance of effective reconnaissance, a role filled by units like the Explorators and Speculators. In the Dacian Wars 101-106 C, under Emperor Trajan, the Explorators provided crucial intelligence that helped the Romans navigate the challenging terrain of Dacia and achieve victory over the Dacian king Decebalus. The speculators were involved in numerous covert operations throughout the empire, including spying on potential threats and conducting reconnaissance missions that were essential for maintaining Roman control over its vast territories. Specific individuals from the explorators and speculators are not well documented in historical records, largely due to the covert and often uncelebrated nature of their work. These units operated in the shadows, providing support and intelligence rather than seeking personal glory or recognition. While no specific members of the explorators or speculators are recorded as having become emperors or leaders of Rome, their contributions were invaluable to the success and security of the Roman Empire. Their roles in gathering intelligence, conducting reconnaissance, and performing covert operations were critical to the strategic and tactical decisions of Roman commanders. In summary, the explorators and speculators were essential components of the Roman military's intelligence and reconnaissance capabilities. They provided the information needed to make informed strategic decisions, ensuring the success of Roman military campaigns and the stability of the empire. Their legacy underscores the importance of intelligence and reconnaissance in military operations, a principle that remains relevant in modern military doctrine. Cohorts Urbani the Cohorts Urbani, or Urban Cohorts, were a paramilitary police force established to maintain public order within the city of Rome and other large cities in the Roman Empire. They were distinct from the Praetorian Guard, which primarily protected the Emperor, and from the legions, which defended the Empire's borders. The Cohorts Urbani were established by Augustus around 13 BCE as part of his broader reforms to maintain order and stability in Rome. Their primary duties included policing, maintaining public order, quelling riots, and dealing with urban crime. They also had a role in suppressing civil disturbances and occasionally supported the military in times of crisis. Members of the cohorts Urbani were recruited from the Roman citizenry, often from the same pool as the legions and Praetorian Guard, 
but they were generally chosen for their suitability for police and civil duties, rather than frontline combat. Recruits needed to be Roman citizens, physically fit and of good character. Previous military experience was valued, although not always mandatory. Training for the cohort's urbany was similar to that of the legions, but focused more on policing skills, crowd control, and maintaining public order rather than large-scale battlefield tactics. The cohort's urbany were frequently called upon to suppress riots and disturbances in Rome. They played a crucial role in maintaining peace during times of civil unrest. During the year of the Four Emperors 69 C, the cohort's urbany were involved in the political and military turmoil, supporting different factions at various times. When Lucius Aelius Sejanus, the powerful prefect of the Praetorian Guard, was executed for treason in 31 C, the cohort's urbany played a role in ensuring order and suppressing any unrest that followed his downfall. They operated under the command of the urban prefect Prefectus Urbi, a significant political position often held by influential senators or equestrians. While no members of the cohort's urbany are recorded as having become emperors or major leaders of Rome, their contributions were vital for the stability and security of urban centers. Their presence allowed the emperor and senate to maintain control over Rome, preventing civil disorder from escalating into broader conflicts. The cohort's urbany were essential to maintaining law and order in the city of Rome and other large cities in the empire. Established by Augustus around 13 BCE, they recruited Roman citizens and focused on policing and civil duties. Their role in suppressing riots, supporting during political upheaval, and maintaining public order was crucial for the stability of urban life in the Roman Empire. While individual members did not typically rise to become emperors, their collective efforts were instrumental in ensuring the smooth functioning of the empire's capital and major urban centers. The Frumentarii The Frumentarii were a specialized unit in the Roman Empire, initially responsible for supervising the grain supply, but evolved into a secretive intelligence service that conducted espionage, surveillance, and even carried out assassinations. Established during the reign of Emperor Augustus in the first century BCE, the Frumentarii began as officers managing the grain supply frumentum for the Roman army. Over time, particularly during the second and third centuries c, their role expanded to include intelligence and espionage activities. Their primary functions included gathering intelligence, conducting surveillance, acting as couriers for sensitive information, and sometimes executing covert operations and assassinations. They reported directly to the emperor and high-ranking officials. Members were often recruited from the legions, chosen for their reliability, discretion and loyalty. Candidates had to be Roman citizens with prior military experience and were selected based on their proven loyalty and ability to handle sensitive information discreetly. While specific training details are sparse, from Entery I received instruction in covert operations, surveillance techniques and the handling of confidential communications. They were involved in various covert operations and intelligence-gathering missions throughout the Empire, playing a crucial role in uncovering plots against the Emperor and ensuring state security. Notable activities included their involvement in suppressing the conspiracy against Emperor Commodus in the late 2nd century C, and carrying out numerous orders from the Emperor, including surveillance and execution of political enemies and rivals. The Frumentarii were disbanded by Emperor Diocletian in the late 3rd century C, around 284-305 C, with their functions absorbed by the newly established agents in Rebus, who took over intelligence and courier duties, but with a more structured and less feared reputation. Agents in Rebus The agents in Rebus were an integral part of the late Roman Empire's administrative and intelligence apparatus functioning as couriers, spies, and general agents for the central government. Established by Emperor Diocletian in the late 3rd century BC during his extensive administrative reforms, the agents in Rebus replaced the earlier Frumentarii. Their roles were crucial for communication, intelligence gathering, and maintaining the emperor's control over the vast empire. They served as the eyes and ears of the central government, carrying out tasks such as delivering official messages conducting surveillance, gathering intelligence, and monitoring the activities of provincial governors and military commanders. Members were recruited from among the more reliable and competent soldiers and administrators within the Roman system. 
Candidates had to be Roman citizens, typically with prior military or administrative experience, and were selected for their trustworthiness, discretion, and ability to carry out sensitive missions effectively. Specific training for the agents in reviews included skills in espionage, surveillance, cryptography, and effective communication, making them adept at navigating both urban and rural environments while maintaining secrecy. The agents in reviews played crucial roles in various political and military events by providing timely and accurate intelligence to the central government, helping to detect and suppress numerous conspiracies and rebellions against the emperor. Their continuous monitoring of provincial governors and military commanders helped maintain the integrity and efficiency of the imperial administration, ensuring that local authorities remained loyal to the central government. While specific individuals from the agents in reviews are not well documented due to the secretive nature of their work, their contributions were vital for the stability and control of the empire. In conclusion, while ancient Rome did not have modern-style special forces or intelligence agencies, they had various specialized units and roles that fulfilled similar functions within the context of their military and political systems. Units such as the Praetorian Guard, Explorators, Speculators, Cohorts Urbani, Frumentarii, and Agents in Rebus were instrumental in maintaining control over the vast Roman Empire. They conducted crucial tasks ranging from elite protection and urban policing to reconnaissance, intelligence gathering, and covert operations. These specialized units played vital roles in ensuring the stability and security of the Empire, dealing effectively with internal and external threats and adapting to the evolving needs of Roman governance and military strategy.